Hello, this is Professor BRB, and in this video we will be discussing how to take the duotone we created in the previous video and use it to create a two-color publication in Adobe InDesign, like the three-fold brochure we see here. So let's go back to a document without um, a picture, and I want to show you how you use the swatches panel when you're creating a duotone publication. Uh, InDesign, by default, has CMYK and a few match color swatches. We want to make sure that we do not have any CMYK in our finished document because we want only two printing plates and two press runs. So I'm going to select these swatches I know I'm not going to use and I'm going to delete them. Click OK. So all I have is my none, my paper, my black, and my registration swatch. Now I want you to watch very carefully what happens to the swatches palette when I open, uh, when I import uh, my duotone. So I'm going to go to File, Place here, and I'm going to find my blue duotone right there that I just created in the last video. And click Open. So now I have my loaded cursor, and you might notice if you look at my swatches palette that before I've even fully placed this picture that InDesign has helpfully uh, included the Pantone color embedded in this picture in my swatches palette. So thank you InDesign. And I'm just going to import this here. Very good. And now I'm going to put my swatches panel away and pull this frame down to size because I don't want to use the whole thing. Just pulling it out to my bleed line here. And now I'm going to go Object Fitting Fill Frame Proportionally. It's very important that you use proportionally, and I'll show you why by making a copy over here. Um, if I were to make my frame smaller and then go just to Object Fitting Fit Content to Frame, you can see this is going to squish my poor violinist and make her look just awful. And you never want to let your pictures get unequally scaled. And you can always double check this by with your white arrow, your direct selection tool, selecting, and then looking up here in this field. And if, it's, uh, if these two uh, values are the same, then you're all good. Before we go any further, I want to return momentarily to Photoshop, where we created this duotone. And I want to let you know what you can do to create duotones with the same color if you find another photograph you might like to use. Uh, I have a photograph here that I think I might want to use. I'm going to crop it down a little. And I'm going to create a duotone with this one. So I've got to go to Image Mode Grayscale. And then when I go to do a tone, I'm going to want to make sure that I use exactly the same Pantone color. And there's an easy way um, to get Photoshop to remember what color I used. So I'm going back to my original do a tone, and I'm going to go back to my do a tone window. And right up here, I have a little gear that allows me to create a preset from the settings that I used for this photo. So I'm just going to go Save Preset here, and I'm going to call it Blue Violin so that I know uh, what it refers to. And notice that at least on a Mac, and I'm not sure how this works on Windows machines, but on a Mac, um, Photoshop takes me directly to the preset and the duotone folder here. And I can just save that preset right into there and click OK. So now when I go back to my color file here that I've changed into a grayscale, I can go to image mode, duotone. And I have a preset drop down menu here. And note, the one I just created, Blue Violin, is there for me. And it creates, makes sure that I use exactly the same color. So that's excellent. I'm just going to go ahead and 
save that. And it's going to be in Photoshop format. That's good. Let's go ahead and save it. I can call it something. I'll call it Orchestra. Save it right in there. So back to InDesign. And let's go to maybe my inside spread here. And go File, Place, choose Orchestra, and I'll go Fill Frame Proportionally. That's another way to get to the same thing. And you'll notice it's cut quite a bit of my uh, picture off because um, the picture was a horizontal format and I've got a vertical format here. So I'm going to move it around with the Direct Selection tool. Uh, and get it going exactly the way that I want it. Now that I have imported my pictures and my swatch is imported, I want to be able to use that swatch color uh, other places in my document. So what I think I'll do here is draw a frame and I have my document set up with layers so I'm going to put that on my background layer. Uh, I'm a big believer in constructing my document with layers and notice I'm going out to my bleed area here and since I put it on my background layer it's underneath my type automatically that's one of the reasons for having that and I go to my swatches and I can just choose that swatch and now I've got blue that's kind of good but looking at it and going to preview mode I notice that that blue looks a little bit too bright going with my photo. And I'm wondering how I can get a sort of a softer, more dimmed out blue like I had here. And it's actually very easy to do in InDesign because InDesign allows you to make what's called a multi-ink swatch where you are going to mix black and whatever color um, you have in your swatches palette. So to do that, you go to your swatches palette and you choose New Mixed Ink Swatch. And I'm going to call this Dark Blue 1 because I can make as many of these as I want. And I'm going to choose my Pantone color, 100%. My black, I'm just going to put a little bit of black in it until it's a kind of a slightly calmed down sort of color and click OK. So now I can go here and just choose dark blue one. I can use this in any kind of a tint that I want. And I can make as many mixed ink swatches as I desire. So that's really kind of a great thing. It's kind of light here. The next thing that I'd like to do is create a gradient swatch so that I can fill this back panel of my three-fold brochure with this uh, darkish to light blue gradient. So the first thing that I need to do is open my swatches panel and choose my Pantone gradient and make a tint swatch. So I go to New Tint Swatch. I can put this down to whatever I want, let's say 41%, maybe even a little less. Click OK. Now I have a tint swatch here. So now I can um, choose New Gradient Swatch. This is a little bit less intuitive than doing this in, say, Illustrator, so it takes a few extra steps. I go down to my gradient stops here. I'm going to choose my tint swatch for one of them. Note that this defaulted back to CMYK, but I can use this drop down menu to get my swatches back. And then I'm going to choose uh, the Pantone color there. And let's call it Blue Gradient 1. Okay. So now if I Go to my rectangle tool and I want to check my layers, make sure I'm on my background layer. Yes, I am. 
going to create a frame here and then fill it with my blue gradient. Now, obviously, that's not going quite in the direction that I want. So I choose my gradient tool right here. And just holding my shift key, I'm just going to drag it like that to get it to go from top to bottom or drag it from bottom to top to get it to do exactly what I want. So that's looking pretty good. And last, I want to show you how to apply uh, color and a style to um, type as I have done here. So a little bit of formatting adds a lot to the attractiveness and the readability of our type. So let's go back to our unformatted type here. I've set this in Adobe Caslon Pro, which many of you will have because it came free with quite a few versions of Creative Suite. I'm going to change this headline to semi-bold italic. Make it a little bit bigger, 18 point, and change the letting to 24 so that I'll have a bit of extra room. And making sure that my type fill color is on the top. I'm just going to change that to my Pantone color. And just to add a little bit of extra uh, magic to it, I'm going to, since I know that this is an OpenType Pro font, I'm going to go up here and choose my OpenType menu and turn on Swash. And that will make a huge difference, as you see. That looks really great now. So I'm going to select that and quickly create a, a character style, new character style. And I'm going to call it Swash Blue and click OK. And now I can very quickly apply that And voila. So I've got a bit more work to do on this brochure. Uh, if any of you would like to know um, a little bit more about OpenType, which I just previewed for you, and OpenType um, allows us to access swash capitals, small capitals, old style figures, and some of these beautiful ornaments. Um, if you would like to know how to access those, uh, my last video in this series, Open Type Magic, uh, will show you just exactly how to do that. So thank you for your attention.